Hey y'all, here with a second video today. Um, but hey y'all. Um, cuz uh shoot, I don't remember. When I get my iPad and everything like that, I'll be able to like actually let y'all see um the questions that people ask me. I'm gonna figure it out, but for right now, I was like I'm good with my phone and doing my thing. But um somebody did ask a question about um you know, like narcissists in the workplace or something. And like, um, how can you tell um, that you're dealing with one? So um, I'll just tell you, because I, I always tell y'all my personal experiences because it's my experience. But nonetheless, either you can, either you, you went through something similar, maybe exactly the same, but it should resonate or it may not. I don't know. But so have I dealt with a a who I believe to be a narcissist as a boss in the workplace? For me, I would say yes. Now, this is before I really understood what narcissism is, the the traits and the um you know, the traits, right? That make a person a narcissist. There's nine traits. And, you know, based on each trait, you know, you can determine whether or not this person is a narcissist. Now, a lot of people are not narcissists, but they are narcissistic and they have those tendencies, you know what I'm saying? Um, but however, how can you identify these toxic individuals nonetheless, right, in the uh, workplace? So to answer this individual's question... Me personally, um, there's a job that I worked at pre-COVID and um, my manager there, uh, I find it ironic that he no longer works there either. Um, whether he got fired or whether he quit, it doesn't matter. But um, these are the people who they try to sell themselves and make themselves bigger than what they truly are. So with this particular manager, oh, I've been working here 15 years, like bragging, right? Like, like you're new to the job. You know, you're a rookie. You're at the bottom of seniority. You just starting out. So you all bright eyed and bushy tailed. Trust me, that light in your eyes is go out. It's going to go out. Uh, I know for me, it did. I was happy to have that job. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But what I did not enjoy was that manager. Nobody liked this manager. Um, he was very arrogant. He was always, you know, um, how he would talk to you. Because everything is not about what you say, but it's how the body language conveys it. And it's the tone. So he could say something and he could say it with a smile, but it's like the body language and the undertone you trying to be shady, you know, you're trying to embarrass someone. So, for example, um, every time I promise you, every time that there was a safety meeting, it was always to do with something that I made a mistake about. You mean to tell me out of all these other workers, nobody else makes mistakes? Just little old me, right? I'm the only one. And, and on top of that. You put me with someone that's supposed to train me how to do my job. I do it how they showed me and it's still a problem. So you want to keep calling me into the office telling me that I, I'm not doing this right. I'm not doing that right. So after about a month of being called into the office every damn day for something, I just straight up said, like, I feel like I'm being harassed and I'm probably going to pursue talking to a higher up because this is just absolutely ridiculous. I'm new here. If you are telling me that I'm not doing my job right, but your trainer trained me and I'm doing it according to how he showed me, sounds like you need to retrain and re-educate your trainer. You know, so your amount of years working here, because see, me... Me personally, I know I'm a child of God, baby. I challenge the status quo everywhere I work. I challenge that shit. Do I purposely do it? No. But 
this is a sign of a narcissistic, possibly a full-blown narcissist in your, you know, corporation or place of work. If they are your boss and you ask a lot of questions because you're just trying to understand your expectations at work, what you the, the should do, what like what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And then if you ask like, well, why not? You know, like if they tell you, hey, if you do this, this could happen or whatever, because I'm, I'm very inquisitive. Right. You know, if, if they say, well, don't do this. I'll be like, well, why not? Like, you know, then they'll tell me a story of what has happened in the past because of X, Y, Z. And that's why they have all these new procedures, policies, and this and this and that. In other words, you conveyed to me that we rewrote our work standards because someone got hurt on the job very badly or this or X. You know what I'm saying? I like for things to be broken down. All right. So. You know, you have bosses like this that they brag on how long they've been working at the job and stuff. And then when you come along and you're very inquisitive, you ask questions, you know, you got to understand. Narcissists don't like it when you ask questions. Who are you to question me? Because they have the mentality of who are you to question me? Why are you asking all these questions? Shut the fuck up. Like that is their attitude and their mentality. So that is a sign that something ain't right with them. You know, don't talk to me about how long you've been working here. But then when I come to you to ask you questions or whatever, or to, or to tell you something, you blowing a head gasket because, oh, my God, you just keep doing the Oh, shut up. All right. Oh, and then here's another way. Problems go on or things come up. You 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 report to them, hey. This doesn't work. This has went wrong. This is going on. This is happening. Um, you tried to fix it or whatever, but you can't because you probably need the manager's permission or you need the manager to go and do it or whatever the case may be, right? You need them to contact someone else to come fix the issue so that you can go back to doing your job, right? So you go and um, report the problem. They just brush it under the rug. There's no problem. Whole time the elephant is still in the room. You know what I'm saying? They 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 very much sweep things under the rug and no, it's fine. It's okay until it's not okay because now corporate got to come to your location. The regional or district manager, their boss or their boss's boss got to come to that location. Now all of a sudden you want to clean up. Now, all of a sudden, you want to be in uniform when you ain't been wearing a uniform like day one that you started working there or whatever, right? Now, all of a sudden, oh, uh, well, make sure y'all this and make sure y'all that. Corporate's coming. Corporate's coming. Scumbags like that as bosses that they know that there is a, a, um, a uniform policy, whatever the policies are, they're not following it, but you want to clean up because corporates coming to town you know what i'm saying those are the scumbag managers out there who more than likely i'm going to say are narcissistic okay now you do have laid back ones who are just you know more lenient and they kind of bend the rules a little bit but narcissistic people they usually pick favorites these are the ones who they love bootlickers, nose and ass kissers, tattletellers and snitches. Now, mind you, the, the manager don't like them damn people at all. They don't like nobody. All right. But because those people come and report back as the little flying monkeys that they, you know, know or unknowingly know themselves to be that that narc will reward them you know, by being, uh, showing favoritism. Well, yeah, you can go do that. Or yeah, you can leave work early or yeah, you can this and you can that, but can't nobody else do it. Otherwise they're going to get chewed out and reprimanded and consequences, right? Yeah. That that's also a sign of a narcissistic manager. Another way, you know, that this individual is very narcissistic is when they are in control of your money, meaning, like they dictate how many hours you can work 
They dictate, you know, the amount of days you get to work. Um, sometimes they will purposely pick on you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, everybody does a five day work week, but you notice that the manager is always trying to get you to work that extra six day, but nobody else is asked. Nobody else is required. It's just you. Because you talk to your other co-workers and they all be like, no, nah, no, nah. they I ain't never been asked to work Saturday. I ain't never been. But the manager's always coming to you to ask you to work an extra day. That 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 that's questionable as hell. Cause I highly doubt you're at they're asking you to work a sixth day, but they're not asking nobody else to do it. Trust me, you are not about to get promoted. And even if you were about to get promoted, I'm sure they would have said something. You know, prior to trying to ask you and get more work out of you. Okay. So when you are inquisitive and you challenge the status quo. Oh, and another thing too. When you are proficient and efficient at your job. You've been at the job for a couple years or whatever. And you just proficiently and effectively just do your job. Everybody at the job or whatever likes you. You get along with everybody. You speak to everybody. You know, things of that nature. Narcissistic bosses and stuff, they don't like stuff like that. Because they know that everybody hates them and dislikes them and complains about them. But people don't complain about you or dislike you. So sometimes they will literally try to like turn your co-workers against you by fabricating stories oh he said she said nonsense gossip and rumors that's usually the narcissist at the job whether whether the narcissist is a fellow co-worker or whether they're a boss they so damn petty because they childish okay they're child they're 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 big children I say big because they're in adult bodies, but they are at a seven or eight year old level mentally and emotionally that, you know, it's like, how dare all of you love that person and show them attention, but you're not giving me no attention. How dare you? You know, that that that's their attitude. Um, Some other signs that, you know, um they they'll they'll try to play control games with your money, control games with your hours and days of work. Um they have this sense of like power hungry. Like if you're an innovative thinker and a critical thinker and you observe what could be done better or whatever and you go and take your idea to that narcissistic boss, they will use your idea and you know, talk it up to the higher ups to try to promote themselves while stepping and crunching on you. So it's best that if you have an innovative idea, you tell them a little bit. Don't tell them the dynamics of how all of it should work because all they're going to do is steal your idea and then not give you credit for it. Okay. You did all the hard work. You came up and did all the, you know, you you might have stayed up, did a late nighters and doing all this stuff for a presentation just for them to, to steal all the credit. No, I don't think so. Um, I, I would gladly let them present that and look stupid. And then when they and then when the real bosses ask you because it's your idea or they have to at that point confess that it's really not their idea, but yours because. They only have so much information and because they have only so much information, they don't have the ability to answer the questions that are going to be asked about the product, the thing or whatever. Right. Um, other things that they do, they they just they just tar it just seems like they target you, you know, they they pick on you. They're coming to you with all these complaints. Oh, oh, here's a here's a uh, example. So I had this boss and she would always try and tell me um cuz like the parking lot, they were repaving and repainting the parking lot so I could only park where I could park, right? And so basically during shift change, um it may look like I double parked, but based on the shift of when I got to work, that's how they were parked. So she's all like, yeah, you know, um, you need to stop double parking and blah, blah, blah. You know 
that they're repaving and repainting the parking lot. You know this. So I don't see you saying this to anybody else that is parked similar to how I'm parked. I don't see you saying that to anybody else, just me. So then when I threaten her that, you know what, call me in this office one more time, I'm going to talk to your boss about you and how I feel harassed by you instantly. Not another peep out of her damn mouth. Not another peep about, you know, this and that and the third because they like to nitpick. They like to fuck with you. They like to make it seem like, you're just not good enough and you're not doing the job good. And and then don't let them. Because like uh, I had one boss who was like, well, well, I can fire you. I told him, I said, don't threaten me with a good time. Should I be walking now? Are you going to give me my walking papers now? Because deep down, I'm calling their bluff. You need me more than I need this damn job. And I treat every job that way. You need me more than I'll ever fucking need you because I got God. God gonna still pay my bills. God still gonna feed me, clothe me, keep a roof over my head. God got me like that. So fuck this motherfucker. And you know what? I'll sit there and, I, and I'll call their bluff. I'll be like, well, should I quit now? Because I already know that if I suddenly quit, your boss is gonna be like, why did, why did this person quit? Why did this, Why is this person about to leave? You know, why this, why that? And they can't answer the questions. Narcissists hate being asked questions by their bosses, by their uh, people that's under them. Narcissists cannot answer questions. You play 21 questions with them and they start getting all mad and upset and, and agitated and irritated. There's your sign that you're dealing with somebody who's mentally unstable and, un and toxic, you know, because it's not like these jobs do psychological evaluations. If you have about 30 crew members that you work with, trust me, you're working with at least one psychopath, one sociopath, one narcissist. So that's three out of about 30 people that are dynamically unfucking stable. So beware, be careful, you know, don't walk around all paranoid, but just peep game. Watch people, listen to how they talk. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm a very likable person. So I I I go to my jobs. A lot of my coworkers like me, bosses as well. However, the ones that don't like me, I just chalk it up to spiritually, we are spiritual enemies. You know, I'm of the light and you are of the darkness. Shoot, that's how I chalk it up. The way I look at it is I tolerate you, I deal with you, and I move along. And then, and then all they do is bitch and cry and complain. They never talk to me. They always avoid me. They this, they that. Yes, as I should. Because technically, you know, as a Christian, the Christians anyway, it, the Bible told you that you should, there are certain people you should shun and excommunicate and, you know, uh, ignore, shun. OK, but the church hasn't done that. And you wonder why the church is the way that it is right now. Crazy as hell, because you did not shun and excommunicate um, people as you should have, you know. But another way to know is, does that person grieve your soul? If they irk you to your soul's core, that is a sign that on a spiritual level, that person is demonic as hell and that you and them don't agree. You never will. You're unequally yoked. Keep your damn distance from them. You know, say as little as possible. Hi, bye, keep it pushing. You know, because at the end of the day, it's all about remaining professional, you know, doing your job because you're, you're not at the job to make no damn friends. You're at the job to do your job, bring home a paycheck and you go about your, your business. Now, if you make friends or I mean, when I say friends, they're your work friend, you know what I'm saying? But if you've never hung out with this individual outside of work, they are not your friend. OK, because you have a different set of friends. If you have friends, you know what I'm saying? Because some people, their friends are their family members, you know, and they hang out with their family outside of work, you know what I'm saying? And if they're not with the family, then they're by themselves as loners, 
That's okay. That's fine. That's dandy. That's kind of how I am. If you're not family, you know what I'm saying? Or I might have that one friend that is not in a blood relation in any way that I might go kick it with. But as far as friend friends, no, these are just co-workers that, you know, you just get along with, you chop it up with, you're just trying to get through your work day until the next day. You know, because nine out of 10, when you off and you at home, you don't talk to them, you don't text, call, none of that, right? So that's your work friend. So just understand that there's levels to friendship. There's levels to, you know, all of that, right? But anyways, y'all, so to answer that person's question, those are just different signs that you're working with a toxic boss, a dysfunctional boss, you know, a mentally, emotionally unstable boss. Something is wrong, you know? when all these things are taking place okay and see a lot of people just chalk it up to well that's my boss they make my life a living hell they just accept it um also something else if you reached a point where you're willing to move on from that job to another job for you know um better workplace you know, that job is closer to home, so less gas, less mileage, traveling. Um, that job pays more money. Whatever it is, if you're looking to move on from that job to another, they get real damn salty. Because if you give it, if you give a two week notice and then they start, you know, telling you, you ain't got to come in, they start playing with your hours and times and they start acting real funny, that's how you know they booty hurt. They booty hurt. And their booty hurt because by you leaving and going somewhere else, they have now lost power and control over you. And, you know, it bothers them. It bothers them a lot to lose control of people. It really does. Like, like these damn narcissistic bosses, they really believe in their psychotic, twisted, warped minds that they somehow own you. You can't quit because I, I, I've had a job where I quit, gave him a two week notice, everything quit. And that manager really was like, you need to come to work today. You, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what don't you understand about I don't work here no more? What don't you understand about me turning in my resignation? Like they full blown ignored my resignation. They full blown. Those are the types of motherfuckers that you got to block. Okay. When you leave that job, you block their phone numbers so that they cannot call you no more ever again. Um, you know, these are the types of bosses that, you know, you could be you could be you could have left that job years ago. They still got your email and randomly sending you an email. And you like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? There's something mentally wrong with them. Okay. Bottom line. So those are just some things to just be mindful for, mindful of and to be careful of. And those are ways to identify. Um, if they aren't a full-blown narcissist, then they have narcissistic tendencies. But either way, it's ways to ide- uh, identify that you're dealing with someone who's very volatile, very toxic and dysfunctional and if you're that way in the workspace oh i can only imagine the chaos and drama that they create um at home um oh yeah that's another thing too they always try to play like um they're just peacemakers they don't cause no drama no trouble they get along with everybody but whole time they're two-faced you know they don't like nobody they just you know, gossiping about everybody, saying this and saying that. I mean, just pay attention to how they how they treat your coworkers. Do they be spreading your coworkers' business? Because if they do it to them, they're gonna do it to you. Do they, you know, however they treat the people that have already been working there and they treat you differently, I mean, the signs are just very right there and in your face. You just gotta be able to actually be able to identify and see it. For what it is and not be in denial okay but all right peace y'all positive injury always creates elevation be careful of these narcs because they out here narking doing what they do and when you understand that they're only doing what they were meant to do as satan's children then you ain't gonna be worrying about them they're annoying but you ain't gonna be tripping off of them so anyways y'all bye